Thank you for staying with us earlier. Yeah, we told you we'll be talking about Lessa Simon, her story, her abduction and the rescue so far. Uh, that was a story on the 17-year-old Uchibe that we talked about. I was taken to Gwanda State from Africa, uh, very close, an area very close to Abuja. Yes, indeed. And uh, we had her mother here with us, uh, Lydia Simon, who was here with us last week. Yeah. And narrated the ordeal of her daughter missing and abducted in tears. And of course, also told us that she was threatened for being sent to prison for the mere fact that she went to make noise about her daughter's abduction. At the moment, we can tell you that there is um, some positives coming out of this story. Yes. Her daughter has been rescued. She's been rescued alive and will be hooking up with her live now on the telephone. But we have with us already Dorothy Jamanze. Dorothy Jamanze Rons is the founder of Dorothy Jamanze Foundation. She was the one who played a key role to ensure that this matter is brought to the public domain and of course the successful conclusion which is being Dorothy. Thank you so much. Thank you for being Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, I think we just have you before we hook up with the parent of um, Blessing. How, how did we come to this point where we are now? Well, within 24 hours after um, the program aired, um, the Nigerian police was able to help us to secure Blessing back from the people who had her in their custody in London. Okay. And so at the moment, um, She's been, as of yesterday, she was finally uh, handed over to her parents. Okay. Yes, as of yesterday. So between Sunday when she got into Abuja and yesterday she was in the custody of the Nigerian police. And we hope that by today the medicals, you know, the, yes, so, right. yeah, the process of uh, taking the medicals will start. And what primary for me is what response systems we have to receiving traumatized, you know, um, people who have been put through such things mm -hmm. and you, we can see now that it's not only the, uh, very much up north that we have these issues of returned people who have been abducted and you know what what sort of um, psychosocial support is available for them what sort of victim support is available for them what sort of support is available for the families who have been traumatized over time looking for their loved ones so you know at least we have right. we're in touch with and blessing and the uh mom and the dad mm -hmm. yes She's on the line now. The dad is on the line the now. The line. Yes, he had to come in from Yebe State. Remember, he was on official assignment in Yebe State as a policeman. You know, he had to come in okay. finally. Okay, can we speak to him? Um, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Um, you, 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 you have been reunited with your daughter? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, how does, how does that feel? Uh, I'm the father of Blessing, Sergeant Simon Matthias, serving at number 21 p.m. at Nyanya. Okay. So, uh, they detail me for special duty to you where I left my house peacefully without any problem. I left here on the 6th of March morning. Okay. Reaching you with only a week, one woman inspector called me that after they have abducted my daughter, convert her to Islam. After converting the state, carry her from here to York to, to Gombe. When I heard this news, I tried my hospital bed to come immediately and you know as a first man, I can't do without our officer's order. So later I came back, on the very day I came back now, they called my wife, Follow the matter, thank God, man of God, and order of our people put my work through. She followed the procedure, and doing that, police people support and go to Gombe, check where the girl is. They saw her and they brought her yesterday evening. Police people now hand over the girl to us. I thank Nigerians and I beg my inspector general of police. As a policeman, this thing happened to me. What of civilians tomorrow? I need those who are involved in this case. And I beg some Nigerian who is listening to me now. Because those who are involved in this case, I want their name out. Let Nigerians hear them and see them and do what supposed to do with them to stop it. Let happen it tomorrow. Uh, where, 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 where was she found when, when you when, when you went to rescue her? Where was she found? I and mean, in whose in, in who's, um, company did you find her? Well, let's say she's with me right now. Okay. Uh, how is she? How is she? How is her health? 
she's with me right now. All right, C can we speak to Blessing herself? Blessing, good morning. Hello. G good morning, Blessing. How are you there? I'm fine. Very well. Now, who kidnapped you? Do, do, can you tell us? Can, can you tell us what happened firsthand? The person that kidnapped me is about our week checking out. Uh, where, where, where does he live? He lives at Masaka and Wahasawa. Okay, how did he how did he kidnap you? Can you tell us the story? How did he kidnap you and where did he take you to? It was the second of our that gave Baba our money for transport. So when they took me there to come there, they warned me that I should not mention their name in any case. Hmm. So they took you from Masaka? Yes. And took you to Gombe. Yes. Have you known them before? No. So I don't know them. We only live in the same area. Okay. So where did they find you? How were they able to get access to you? And how were they able to put you in the transport and move you from that particular location? It was through the woman police that they get to when when they wanted to take me to her house. The circuit house that informed her husband, so they took me to their house. Before they took me to the man police house, they told me that in two or three days that I should leave the house and come to their house so that they can take me far away. Mm. Did you did you tell this to your parents, to your mother? Sir? Did your mother was your mother aware? Did you tell your mother what is going on? No. Why didn't you tell her? Nothing. So okay, so when they took you to Gombe, what, what happened to you there in Gombe? When they took me to Gombe, Baba Awa gave his gave the driver his friend number that when we reach he should call his friend so that he will come and pick me. By then when we have reached he called the man, the man came and picked me. He took me to his house. I rest for some hours. Then he now took me to the one office, Jekai Dafari. Mm. Okay, so what happened there? When he took me there, the um, madam that was there, they now asked me what happened. Then the man explained everything to them. They now took me to the house. By then, they request of my mom number. I told them I don't have my mom number. If they asked that I should join the other girls that I did. So there were other girls there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how many were there? Before we are 24, before some of them left, some of them got married, now remain 12. So all those girls were taken from different places and brought there? Yes. So what did they do to you people? What did they do to you? Well, our family didn't do anything to me. The only, the Baba Howard only gave me one ring. What did you say that ring is for? That in case that these people that don't want me to join their religion mean that they will not be able to recognize me, they will just be seen with that not me. Hmm. Do you did you feel that you know what, what was happening to you? Did you did you know what was happening or did you just see yourself doing the things I asked you to do? Sir? How do I put it down? Did, did you understand what was going on around you? Or did you feel you were being controlled by somebody? I feel I was being controlled. Did they marry you? No. They didn't give you any man to marry? Uh, no. Okay. All right, blessing. I understand you're going. You've, you're going through your medicals, and you know the results will soon will soon come out. I don't know, but in the meantime, how do you feel? Did, did they did they hit you physically? Did they try to do anything to you? What? Did they hit you physically? Did they try to do anything to you? No, they only gave me warning that. In case the mother reached the station that I should not mention their name. So they did not touch you? Huh? Did they touch you? No, they didn't touch me. They said that if I mention their name, they can be able to kill me or beat me. Wow. Well.
Oh, uh, Dorothy. Uh, the, uh, but the mom is there too. The, the mom is there. Unfortunately, we don't have much time to talk to the mom. Okay. But there was um, a case of uh, a mom was taken to court somewhere. Yes, the mom was taken to court uh, for daring to, to speak, um, out. speak out. out about it. Yes, and she was charged with criminal intimidation and all of that. Yes, so, so, yes. Like yes. matter has been, matter has been uh, uh, yes, yes, to fifteen. Uh, yeah. That's today. Yes. All right, um, uh, uh, we say thank you to Blessings Father there. Uh, uh, what was his name again? Mr. Simon, Mr. thank Simon. you. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you so much. We hope you put your daughter through the normal medical checkup and yeah. allow her to have the, the kind of um, medical intervention she's supposed to have. But Dorothy, speaking generally, what do you make of all of this? About 22 other girls taken it is from different places without the knowledge of their parents, kept in a certain place? That's human trafficking. Oh. It is crime. It is not religion, it is not culture, it is human trafficking and it is crime. The, rest, the justice systems need to be up and doing. As at 29th of May, we got a signal that this girl was in a certain place. And unfortunately, all the um, access we tried to make with police, they said they were on public holidays. Police cannot be going on public holidays when criminals do not go on public holidays. I mean, this girl has come back now safely, and she said how she's been threatened and all of that. We don't have adequate response systems to cater to these people. Now, the father is currently stranded in Abuja, you know, uh, in a massacre. He, he doesn't have um, um, financial resources to go back to his base. His work is, you know, pretty much threatened because he wants to be here. And I asked Blessing this morning, are you happy to see your parents? She said she's very happy to see her parents. She's happy to be reunited with her parents, you know. So it, it, this, these children are threatened not to, you know, speak out. In fact, the, the statement that was initiated in Gombe before Blessing got into Abuja stated that the parents were not her biological parents. And when they started panicking, I said, don't disturb yourselves. There's something called DNA. There are medical means of testing to prove every Okay, okay, okay talking about reports now, uh, you, you, you said that this is an organized crime. It's you, obviously you, an organized crime. You called crime. it human trafficking. It's but human trafficking. More, more importantly, is it true that police officers aid abductions and also frustrate investigations? Well, you can't, you can't absolve the women because um, a woman police was giving this girl to return to the mother. And um, a, a woman police was giving the girl to return to the mother. And the girl never made it back to the mother. She claims she returned the girl to the mother. The question is, why did she return the girl to the mother? The mother's house? The mother's where? She never returned the girl to the mother. The girl disappeared to go on there from there. Okay, but why didn't, why didn't the police has also follow through with the, well, the subject of whether they returned her or not returned her and ask her for the address of where she was returned and also investigate and do follow up? I mean, is it just good enough to tell somebody you returned somebody and then, you know, not, it, 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 that's case closed? What is available in all honesty to people at grassroots level is appalling. Many people are not treated humanely by the systems, uh, you know, once it is grassroots level. So, we expect the police now to have an official statement on what exactly has transpired and possibly parade all suspects, everybody that had a hand to, in, in this, rescue all the other girls. From what this uh, lady has said now, there are other girls in captivity. And the, from the girls in captivity, you heard that a certain number were married. Married to who? These are children who have been abducted. And as you are hearing their marriage, it is wrong. It is not religion. It is not culture. It is criminal. And criminal, sh uh, criminal uh, issues should be treated as criminal. There, is no, there are no excuses. Our justice systems keep failing us and giving criminals impetus to continue committing these crimes. All right, I think I'm sure there's much we can take it for now. Uh, Dorothy, thank you so much for your efforts and uh, keep, it, keep it going. I hope we'll get, we're getting updates from you on the status of blessing. Yes, and, uh, not, the uh, state is not even taking the responsibility of, you know, seeing to the medical needs of this girl. Mm -hmm. What sexual harassment has happened to her? There should be victim support, compulsory mm -hmm. for victims of sexual related violence because this lady was taken by men. How do we ascertain? Mm -hmm. Who, well, as long as the cost of the, the burden of the cost you know lies on the victims yeah. a lot of justice is denied mm. the government needs to sit up all right the government really needs to sit